let's do this. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video here on m Reviews. Peace and blessings to all out there. So as you can tell by the title, it's another one of these what I love and hate about a particular watch. And the last time I did a video like this, which was for the Oyster Perpetual reference 114300, that was very, very popular with you guys and I have been inundated with requests to do more. So really quickly, if there are any particular models, makes that you'd like me to do in this video format, then drop a comment down below because I'm going to be working with a range of different watch brands to bring you more watch related content. Content. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. You find that subscribe button down below, hit that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever videos go live. Right, on with today's video. And this is it, the Rolex Explorer 2 reference 16570. If you've been following me on social media, you'll know that I have been absolutely obsessed with this particular watch ever since I got my hands on it. I own this now for about six to seven months and this was really almost a semi-impulse buy. I went into a dealer here, a local dealer, when I saw the black dial with that beautiful red GMT hand, I was completely won over. It's a 2006 model. So let's start off by talking about what I love about this watch. Now there are many reasons, but for me, the first thing that I want to talk about is tool watch. This out of all of Rolex's current lineup, probably Rolex's most tool, tool watch, if that makes sense. Now, Rolex broadly do two range of watches. They do the kind of dressier watch and then they do the sports tool watch. And out of that sports tool watch, if you look at the Explorer 2, you'll notice that there are certain features about it that really make it true to that term, tool watch. First of all, there's no rotating bezel. That means that, you know, it's less likely to get scratched shattered if it's sort of uh, ceramic. It's less likely to have dirt and dust caught up underneath that bezel where the motion is, where the mechanism is to rotate it. Also, if you look at the uh, bracelet on this particular one, it's a brushed bracelet as opposed to kind of being brushed and polished. Also, that lack of a bezel will mean that it actually has quite a slim side profile. And that's one of the things that makes it really great with uh, a smart suit like what I'm wearing right now or when you decide to dress down as well. For me, that was a big part of the appeal with the Explorer 2. The more that I looked at it as a watch, the more that I did research, I realized that it's actually, it's a real Explorer's kind of watch. The second thing that I love about this watch is the fact that it has a complication, but a very useful complication. You'll notice on the dial that it has one hand more than that traditional second, minute, hour, uh, hand setup. It has a fourth hand, which is that red GMT hand. Now that red GMT hand, originally when this watch was uh, made by Rolex, was designed for spelunking. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. Spelunking was essentially the uh, exploration of caves. And one of the things that uh, people that explore caves probably needed was the ability to easily tell whether it was AM or PM. Now, since the Rolex Explorer 2 originally was launched, uh, Rolex have updated the movement. Now, this particular model has the 3185 in-house caliber movement. That means that you have that, th the fourth hand, that GMT hand, is independent. That means you can set it up uh, to show a different time zone. So for me, on my particular Explorer 2, I have the local time set up where I am here in Abu Dhabi. And the second hand is set up for London. And that complication, out of a lot of the complications that I've seen in watches, is probably the most useful complication to have for most of us today. A lot of us travel, a lot of us work uh, with different time zones. So that is actually a real bonus feature to have at an instant glance on the watch. Let's talk about the third thing. The final thing for me has to be the fact that really this watch is currently in Rolex's lineup, probably one of the most undervalued Rolexes. It's not gone through that traditional Rolex inflation that you find with things like the Submariner, the GMT. GMTs are probably one of the most fascinating Rolex inflations that we currently have. And for some reason, that hasn't been the case with the Explorer 2. Now, there may be a range of reasons for that. One might be the fact that it isn't one of the more popular Rolex tool watches. Hey, that is an advantage. That means you can essentially get, you know, a, a Rolex Explorer 2 
that has, in many cases, the same movement as you would find in a GMT. Yes, minus the colorful rotating bezel, you're gonna get that at a much lower price point. Right, those are the three things that I really love about this watch. Let's talk about the three things that I dislike, or three things that you might want to consider if you're picking one of these up. The first thing is, unfortunately, that clasp. This is obviously an older model uh, Rolex watch, so it's gonna have that older clasp. The clasp on this for me, it just, it's the only part of the Rolex watch that I feel feels a little cheap. That's one of the things that might put you off if you're considering getting one of these. One of the things that I really don't like, and one of the things I'm not a big fan of when it comes to this particular model. Another thing that I kind of dislike about this watch is the loom. Um, the loom on this is not perfect, it's okay. Uh, but it's definitely something that if you're looking for a newer watch, particularly the newer 216570, is going to be an advantage because you've got that chroma light on the newer models. And the, the loom light, I find, doesn't last as long as I would like. I've been always fussy about looms, particularly on Rolex models, because I think generally they're not as good as you would get on other models. That's another thing that kind of, mm, about this. The final thing, this isn't something that affects me, but I've seen this on forum and that is the fact that the Rolex Explorer 2 isn't the most popular Rolex to watch. Now for some people that isn't an issue. They buy watches based on what they want and what they need and then they factor in the overall value for money. But there are some people, particularly with a brand like Rolex, that are going to be more interested in a product that's either going to go up in price or a iconic a piece, such as the Submariner or the GMT. You're not really going to get that with the Explorer 2. The reason I purchased this was because I felt that the value for money that was in this was really, really good. Let's face it, you get a GMT uh, complication. You get a watch that is a tool watch. You get a beautiful design. Considering this is 10, 11 years old, it's still great looking. All these elements make it a great and very intelligent buy. You know, all in all, I love this watch. I have been wearing this watch out of all of my current collection at the moment, the most. And for me, it ticks so many of the boxes. I think the advantages of owning an Explorer 2 certainly outweighs the disadvantages. Right guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, remember to find that like button down below and smash it. If you found this video useful, then please do consider sharing it on your social media or on any of the forums. And that's it from me for now. I will see you in the next video. Until then, remember, new video every Tuesday and Saturday. I'm Mkwan. Live life, peace and blessings.